really in one, and um, I'm glad to be here with all of you tonight. I've met some of you before in um, past meetings. Um, I am, well first I was a family court judge for six years, and then uh, I was an acting Supreme court judge in Manhattan doing um, guardianship cases and landlord-tenant matters, and uh, just last Monday I moved back to the Brooklyn Courthouse uh, Supreme Court in 360 Adams, and I'm currently covering the mental hygiene part um, of Judge Steve Masowski while oh, he's um, out on medical leave for a few weeks. So, right. um, I'm glad to be here with you all. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dina Douglas. I also am an acting Supreme Court Justice. I sit in the Supreme Court in the criminal term. I've been a judge for 14 years. I am um, from Flatbush, Brooklyn. Uh, thank you for having me here tonight, and thank you for carrying my petitions in 2017. That was my re-election year. I'm serving the second year, the second term of, of a 10-year term. So I, I'm now in year four of my second term, second 10-year term. Um, what I really wanted to talk to you about is uh, bail reform, because I am a, a career prosecutor uh, as a prosecutor for uh, 11 years before I took the bench, I was a deputy chief in homicide, a bureau chief of one of the trial bureaus in the Brooklyn DA's office, was a federal prosecutor and spent my entire career in a uh, criminal court and in the criminal sphere. Um, what was said about bail reform is something that, as from a judge's perspective, we are very concerned about. And I'll give you an example of somebody who's charged with robbery in the second degree as a felony, and you would, and as the state senator stated, you do have certain designated felonies that are outside of our control that are either classified as, ser as violent felonies or nonviolent. And robbery in the second degree by statute is a nonviolent felony offense which means it's a, a non-qualifying event and bail cannot be set. Somebody, so it's something that as judges we are concerned about because we understand that you know, we're people too, we come from the communities, we have family and friends, elders who are victims of crimes, and we, but by the same token, we don't want somebody sitting in jail for months and months who stole bread from the candy store because that person just wanted something to eat. So it's a balance that we always are, are striking, and it's something that we're concerned about. And I'm happy to hear that the state legislator is concerned and is taking another bite at the apple for our communities. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. It's always a pleasure to be here. It's like being home, and I appreciate the yeah, welcome. You're like never left. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm starting to take my pajamas with me. Um, Mr. Sicado, a lot of you know me. And I'm very thankful for the reception that you Thank give you. me every time I'm here. It's truly an honor. Um, it's an honor to be with you. It's an honor to be up here with my esteemed colleagues. And as you know, or if you don't know, I'm currently sitting and have been in the last two years, I sit in the matrimonial term. And I deal with divorce, child custody. It's a little rough. It's emotionally, it's emotionally hard because you're dealing with people whose families are, real, are essentially <laughs> fractured. And my job is, I believe, is to help heal that fracture no matter what it takes. Being a judge, as, as Richard said, is not a right, it's a privilege. You chose us to protect and promote you. And that's what I try to do on a daily basis. Um, I don't sleep a lot at night, but if I did, that means I wasn't doing my job, okay, at all. Um, because people rely on me and people rely on us. And essentially we have a lot of power. It's not, it's meant to, it's meant to help you as much as we can. And sometimes you, sometimes the law is on the side of one person, but as long as everybody leaves feeling that they were treated fairly and courteously, that's half the battle won, right? So, uh, as I said, you know me, this is what I'm currently doing. I have to tell you, this is all I want to do. Everybody thinks I'm nuts, but you know why? Sometimes you find your niche. And I like people. I love people. I love to talk to people. So this is for me. I'm not the type that sits and wants to read, although I do that. <laughs> So, um, good evening everyone. Thank you for giving me this privilege to speak before you. Thank you, Ari. Thank you, Marlorita. 
and also I want to wish everyone a happy belated 2020 and, and beyond. Um, my name is Carolyn E. Wade, and I have been a judge for 13 years. To break it down even to smaller de decimals or months, I was a civil court judge for five years, and then I was appointed as an acting Supreme Court justice in 2012. So five years as a civil court judge, and the past eight years as an acting Supreme Court justice at 360 Adams Street, downtown Brooklyn. Now, I, I too presided in the mental health court for a year, and then I was assigned to another part. Now I only do the mental health appeals. In addition to the mental health appeals, I preside over complex, complex labor law cases, complex medical malpractice cases, car accidents, slip and falls, defamation, and I've even had a couple of uh, sexual harassment cases. So I have a, a wide variety of cases that are assigned to me for trial. What I want to say is that because of you, I am a judge. And I say that because being born and raised in Kings County, I ran countywide, and everyone in this room probably voted for me, even though maybe you didn't have my, you didn't know me personally, but you probably voted for me. So I, I want to thank you because I too, when I first ran in 2007, I was elected thanks to you, and then I ran for re-election in 2017, and I was re-elected thanks to you. So before I say anything else, thank you very much. And you elected me, and I try to do the best every day, and I treat everyone with respect and dignity. So thank you. And I just want to elaborate, Carolyn Wade is so good, so good, that in 2017, nobody wanted to run against her on Democratic primaries. There were 11 candidates, it was very, very competitive primaries, but I always said that it shows the qualification, the caliber, you know, like, and also, uh, it's not the first time you're in this club, you know. Like, no, so, no, no, like, no. At least three of you, I would say, like constantly here, you know. <laughs> Probably will be soon will be four of you, you know. Like, but I see every time, I see Karen Cohen, I see Teresa Sikota practically, like, didn't skip a single. And Lillian Ben, I also see you all the time here. But everybody is welcome, you know, like, you don't, uh, maybe tomorrow there will be six openings or ten openings and we'll vote all of you in, you know. And so, uh, it's only because sometimes we have to make a tough choices. It's choice is very tough. It's only district leaders vote. But I always said that if, if someone doesn't come to the club, if someone doesn't come to Brighton Beach, Manhattan Beach, Marlborough Houses, Midwood, Homecrest, and they want our support, uh -uh, not going to happen. And also during the election, several of their colleagues said, ah, oh, come on, 45th district, not so many Democrats, nobody votes, forget it, la la la. Everybody who said stuff like this lost election. And I mean, sometimes lost big time elections, you know, like, and after that, oh, like, we made a mistake, oh, so, am I right, Kanye? Yes, right. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Kanye Melendez just joined us. <laughs> Many of you voted for the So, and I wanted to introduce Joy Campanelli. She also was here many times. And I know that, yeah. I also wanted to say that we are a little bit biased here because Brian Gottlieb is working for Jack Joy Campanelli and praising her every day. <laughs> well, I'm just okay. going to say, because if, if you see me here before you know, I, I get right to the point. I do echo my uh, colleague's sentiments about being a judge. But again, Joy Campanelli, uh, supervising judge, civil court, Staten Island. We had this discussion before. Yes, I have to cross the bridge. I had a conversation <laughs> with somebody about the tolls. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, I'm waiting for it. It hasn't it happened. It happen hasn't happened yet. But I'll be around um, if you want to come up and talk to me. I'll be at the end of the meeting. But uh, thank you again, and it's always great to see you guys. Thank you. Thank you. And I already mentioned Kanye Melendez. She came a little bit later, but we know who Kanye Melendez is because we talked about her and Patria Fries Colon almost daily in this district. You know? yes. thank I you. just want to say hello, yeah. everybody. We also have a lot of attorneys here who are very good uh, friends, members of this club, very loyal people. So I already mentioned Brian Gottlieb, please. <laughs> Julia Roslavsky, please. <laughs> Robert Katz. Olga Ford, please. And Alexandra Larkin, our club treasurer. Alexandra, please. She will pass for exam very soon. Okay, okay. <laughs> yes. You are not attorney yet, but glad, glad to see you. 
Sam Funk, our vice president, just join us. Hi, Sam. Thank you. Thank you so much.